Great afternoon, awesome Houseful webinar participants. Kindly write WH for Women's Health for today. Shout out to the early registrants from companies, Maria Cristina from HAU, Alinea May from the PNP, Lourdes, Catherine from the Medical City Clark, Jean Rose from Philtop Industries. Thank you to the following for making this Houseful webinar a success. To the Medical City Clark, Ms. Evelyn Yumul, Mr. Kevin Alfonso, and to the webinar team, Megan Canlapan, Leonard Sikat, Kim Pitolentino, and from HRMO, Mark Luwil and Sangan and her Matricia Maliari. The Angel Light Prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we glorify you for giving us the angelite charism. We thank you for the gifts of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the way, truth, and life. We bless you for the continuous guidance of the Holy Spirit. Grant us, we pray, courage and strength, that we may give perpetual praise to you in whatever we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. O holy guardian angels, guide us and protect us, Laos Deo Semper. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our webinar reminders, ensure that you have charged your phone, tablet, or laptop enough for the webinar duration. Be an active participant. Prepare your possible questions to our webinar speaker. Keep your audio muted whenever you're not speaking to avoid distractions to other webinar participants. Provide feedback. Help us improve the webinar to better match your needs and preferences by letting us know what's relevant to you and your company. Just click the activity feedback link, which will be posted later in the chat box section. Send your questions in the chat box or Q&A section for the open forum. To adhere to the rights of the organization and speaker, participants should observe the no recording policy. Good afternoon. I am Avel Antonio, the director of Holy Angel University School of Professional Education and Lifelong Learning or Housepel for continuing education and development. Why have Housepel training, seminars, and workshops your company and organization this 2021? Working professionals who undergo training will improve their set skills, be abreast of the new innovations of the job and industry that they are in, build their confidence in their abilities that will lead to leveling up their performance, make them perform their duties more efficiently and effectively. When working professionals of a company or organization are exposed to consistent trainings, it will result to improve professionalism and productivity. Then the clients will feel the impact of the elevated service that will raise their impression and opinion of the company or organization. For training needs assessment, call us at Housepel. The numbers are flashed on the screen or email us at housepel at hau.edu.ph. Today's Housepel webinar, Take Charge of Your Health, What You Need to Know About Your Body and Cancer Prevention. Our speakers, Dr. Claudine Ordonez, breast surgeon, head the Medical City Clark Breast Center, and Dr. Gina Masangkai, OB gynecologist, chair, the Medical City Clark Devel Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. Our first speaker, Dr. Felicidad Claudia Ordonez, clinical fellow, Breast Unit East Avenue Medical Center, Department of Surgery, chief resident at East Avenue Medical Center, Training Resident, Department of Surgery, East Avenue Medical Center, Doctor of Medicine, Ateneo de Manila University, Chair, Management Committee, Breast Care Cancer, East Avenue Medical Center, Breast Study Group, Philippine Society of General Surgeons, Head, Breast Cancer National Kidney and Transplant Institute, Philippine Society of Surgeons, Breast Study Group, Philippine Society of General Surgeons, Metro Manila Chapter Publication Committee, Philippine Society of Breast Surgeons, National Secretary, and the head of Breast Center, the Medical City Clark. Let us all welcome on Zoom center stage, Dr. Felicidad 
Claudia Ordonez. Good afternoon, Dr. Claudine. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Hi, Sir Abel. Good, good afternoon and good afternoon to everybody who is watching us here today. No? And it's a very worthwhile afternoon for all of us because we will be really learning a lot from myself and Dr. Gina. No? Thank you, thank you for your invite. Now, ang haba nung ano ah, ang haba nung aking ano introduction. But just ano, just a what's this? Just, the long and short of it is I'm I'm part of um, training institutions in Quezon City and as well, I practice as well in Clark Medical City. All right. So, may I share my screen? Ready na ba? Yes, okay. Dr. Claudine, you can screen share now. Okay. Hi, good afternoon to everyone. So, as Sir Avel has introduced, I'm Dr. Ordonez. No? I am the head of the Medical City Clark Breast Center. The Medical City Clark Breast Center started in 2016 and ako ho ang lead nito. So, for this afternoon, take charge of your health. As you all know, well, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but March is the International Women's Month. Actually, March 8 ang International Women's Day, no? So sabi namin, maganda at ang title, Take Charge of Your Health. Para um, it gives us a more proactive attitude towards our bodies. Take charge of your health and what you need to know about your body and cancer prevention. All right. So, sino man tayo, no? kung an ano man yung ginagawa natin sa buhay natin, whether we be a doctor or a family woman no? or teacher or ano pa man ang ating whatever we do in life, we all need to take care of ourselves. All right? So, sabi nga nila, fight like a girl. But how can we be able to take care of ourselves if we are not aware of what are the things that we need to pay particular attention to? Okay, so as women, we would like to empower you because it's International Women's Month. Let us take charge of our health. Okay, so why is it important for us to tell you about breast cancer and gynecologic malignancy no, for this afternoon? As you can see, this data is from the WHO, from the World Health Organization. Breast cancer is number two, based on the 2018 census, is number two, second, second, only, second to lung cancer in number of new cases. At the same time, it is also number two in number of deaths secondary to cancer. So this is the 2018 data, no? All right, so kailangan yan. Dapat alam natin lahat. Kaya importante yan. Ang usual na question sa amin when patients come to us in our clinics, sabi nila, Doc, what is breast cancer? Or how did I get this? No? Kasi syempre, magbabacktrack sila. They're thinking, ano kayang nagawa ko? Bakit I have breast cancer? Or is there something that I, have, I could have done? So that I don't have cancer now. So usually kasi breast cancers, uh, a normal cells kasi, predetermined na yan kung kailan sila mag, mag divide and mag -re reproduce Okay? So that is what normal cells do. Alright? The problem is sometimes, nagkakaroon tayo ng damages doon sa cells natin. Do you know what cell is? Cell is the smallest living unit of you know our bodies. Alright? So, nagkakaroon ng DNA damage, nag-mutate. This can be sometimes secondary to stress, no? Secondary to toxins, no? So, na-accumulate yun. And eventually, nagkakamutation. And these cells that usually develop in a, a patterned way go berserk. Okay? Abnormal na yung kanilang reproduction. So, divide ng divide, divide ng divide, uncontrollably and continuously. Eventually, it forms into a tumor. Okay? So it forms a mass and 
sa, when it forms a tumor, no? And pag naka, ano dun sa DNA niya na it's going to be a cancer, it's bound to be a cancer, it's going to be a cancer eventually. Okay? So makikita natin dito yung normal cells, ito, no? Nakikita nyo, well-behaved sila. Habang naman dito, sa gitna, where the tumor is, you will see that, you know, production is chaotic. No? And mas, ma, mas mabilis than the others. So eventually, these malignant tumors, ang, what they're notorious for is it grows and it grows and it spreads. Alright? So the the trademark of cancer cells is that it grows and encroaches on areas that they're not supposed to be in. All right. So yung cancer, eventually, it reaches the bloodstream, it reaches the lymphatic system. That's why nagkakaroon ng tinatawag namin na metastasis. So, pa, ibig sabihin nito, the cancer cells travels to other areas. For example, for breast, the most common areas would be the bone, the lungs, what else, the liver, and also the brain. So ito yung mga commonly na chinecheck namin for possible metastasis. Okay. So, next slide. Kasi sabi namin, di ba, um, what, do you need, what you need to know about your body and prevention. The... The, unfortunately, there are no exact measures or exact, you know, routines or practices that we can take up in our day-to-day -day activities that can really help us 100% prevent the, the chance of getting breast cancer. But there are risk factors, and these are proven risk factors that increase our ch chance of getting breast cancer. Okay, so because we know those risk factors, we know as much as possible how to lessen our risk. Okay, you follow. There are risk factors that cannot be modified. For example, the fact that you're female, hindi, yan, hindi natin yan makokontrol, no? So breast cancer is more common among females. It happens in males and in, and in females, but it's more common among females. Advanced age. You see, as we as we grow, as we get older, the toxins, the stress, everything, yung mutation, kumbaga parang naiipon yan sa katawan natin. So, eventually, na mutate talaga yung ating mga DNA and it, po, it gives us an increased risk for breast cancer. Of course, we also asked about previous breast cancer. And then your family history. Important yan sa amin. Um, kamusta ba yung parents nyo? Mga kapatid ng parents nyo? Grandparents nyo? Mga pinsan nyo? Lahat yun kailangan namin i-take note of so that we can properly counsel you as to your risk and also pag na-diagnose ng breast cancer as to how to take care um, of your family members. And then yung sinasabi nila, early menarche or ibig sabihin menstruation earlier than age 10. Kasi usually sa atin, 12, 13. But when it's earlier than age 10, we, we think of that as a little bit too early. And menopause, after age 55, ang common kasi is 50 to 55. No? So pag later than 55, medyo increased risk po tayo for breast cancer. Never having a child, um, never giving birth, no? So, increased risk po yan. And then, obesity. Ano ho ba yung obesity? Ibig sabihin yan, in Tagalog, it's labis na katabaan. So, pag important sa amin, no? kukunin namin yung inyong weight, kukunin namin yung height. Para dun ba sa height nyo, tama ba yung inyong weight? No? We call that body mass index. Meron lang prescribed na body mass index. Dapat yan, below than we up to 25 lang, 19 to 25, yan yung normal. So it's important na we keep ourselves in that ideal weight. Okay? Tapos kung nung kabataan, meron history na nag-radiation, lalo na dun sa ating neck or sa, sa chest area. Kasi sa mga bata, di ba, common din yung mga 
leukemia, ganyan, or other cancers, kung saan sometimes they need to undergo radiation treatment when, you know, when they were younger. Now, what are the modifiable risk factors? Ito kasi proven na ho ito, alcohol and smoking. Alcohol and smoking are actually associated with a lot of cancers, no? So, as much as possible, kung kayang hindi ma-expose ang ating mga sarili sa alcohol and smoking, and then also oral contraceptive pills. I know oral contraceptive pills, you know, many women take it kasi, um, of course, um, for contraception and at the same time for therapeutic, um, therapeutic purposes. Now, it's, I'm not saying that you shouldn't take OCPs, but have a, ayan, si Dr. Gina ang ating next lecturer, no? always, always just have a, uh, what's this, an informed, informed discussion with your OB. Kasi kung wala naman talagang ibang maibibigay, then we will just have to um, take the OCPs and be more um, observant of our screening. Okay? So ito lang ho yung mga risk factors natin for breast cancer. Ngayon, alam na natin ano ba yung ano yung, yung mga nakakapagpataas ng ating chance na magkaroon ng breast cancer. What now are the signs and symptoms of breast cancer? Okay? What are the things that what are the red flags with regard to my breast health? So ano yung mga number 1? The most common sign of a breast cancer is a new breast lump. So mind you, new, meron ho yung modifier, merong new. Ibig sabihin niyan, we encourage all women to be familiar with your breasts. Kaya nga sabi namin, di ba, kailangan magsiself breast examination kayo. Kasi it's the patient, it's the woman who can first be able to find out kung meron siyang new breast lump. Kung kabisado niya, alam niya that this wasn't here a month ago or two months ago. No, Alam niya kung may changes. And then kung may nipple discharge. No, We're particularly um, concerned with bloody nipple discharge. Sometimes hindi siya parang blood na blood na red na red. No, Sometimes parang iced tea o kaya parang kape. No? Dark, dark brown. Kasi this can be old blood pag ganyan. Now, ang isa pa is dimpling. Ano ibig sabihin ng dimpling? Dimpling is yung merong merong dimpling, may may indentation doon sa skin, no? Ibig sabihin kasi noon, there's something underneath the skin or within the breast that's pulling onto the skin of the breast kaya pumapasok, no? Kasama diyan yung nipple um, inversion, yung pumapasok yung nipple. Ibig sabihin hindi pila. Okay? For the orange. Ano yan? Alam nyo ba yung orange feel? Try to imagine, ano ba yung itsura ng orange feel or ano yung texture niya, no? It's shiny, it's glossy, di ba ho? And then, may red dot, eh, red dots. Meron siyang dots, meron siyang pores na sinasabi. Ganyan minsan yung nangyayari sa breast ng isang babae kapag medyo malaki na ho yung bukol at nagmamanas the entire breast. So, nagiging mas obvious yung pores natin sa skin ng breast. So, parang ano nga, parang balat ng orange. Tapos, if we have axillary nodes, ibig sabihin ho niyan is uh, meron tayong kulani sa kilikili. Uh, sometimes kasi patients, hindi nila nakakapa na meron na silang breast mass and sometimes mas nakakapa ang axillary lymph nodes. So, sometimes yan ang unang napapansin. Or skin changes. So, you pay attention to the skin of your breast. Sometimes may eczema. Sometimes may redness. Sometimes may mga wound. No? So, we need to pay attention to these things. And of course, nipple changes. So, as I've said kanina, nipple inversion. Or maybe nipple discharge. Or any... Anything out of the ordinary. Kasi as women, we should be able to tell if there's something new in our bodies. Alright? So, be observant and know your know yourself, know your body. Okay? So, syempre, ano yung gagawin? Anytime na merong kayong nakita na any of these, visit 
your doctor. Okay. Being a breast surgeon, I would say talaga, visit your surgeon. But sometimes, kasi we don't have the, uh, ano pangalan ito, hindi available yung surgeon, kung saan ka magpunta, visit your doctor muna. But op- ultimately talaga, uh, visit your surgeon so that he or she can properly assist you in advise you as to what to do. Okay? So, nadaanan na natin ho ang risk factors. Nadaanan na natin ang signs and symptoms. Ano naman yung next? How can I protect myself? Okay? So, it's about protecting ourselves. Diba sabi ko ho kanina, there's no 100% um, practice or routine that I can advise you to do in your daily daily lives or observe para sabihin na, ay, never na ako magkaka-cancer, no? It's actually just decreasing our risks and making sure that if ever we get it, it is detected early. Sabi nga nila, early detection is your best protection. Kasi with early detection, the cancer is the cancer is detected at an earlier stage at an earlier stage options are more available the chance of it getting cured is higher okay so paano yon get checked later i will discuss with you kung ano yung mga um, how many how how yung frequency dapat na nagpapatingin kayo no um, get checked for your screening and for any of the signs or symptoms that we have, I have previously enumerated to you. Know your risk. If, you know, let's say, mother mo, sister mo, pinsan mo, maternal grandmother mo, high risk kayo. No? Ang daming may history of cancers sa family. Because you know your risk, mas magiging vigilant ka. Mas magiging observant ka. Diba? So, cancers also that we take, uh, that we pay attention to are colon ha, and ovarian and pancreatic. No? And then, as I said, know your breasts. Kasi, you won't be able to tell if you have a new lump or if merong ano because if you're not, if you're not familiar with the texture of your own breasts or feeling mo, parate may bukol, pero, Kung alam mo na, eh magmula naman three years ago, four years ako, ganitong pakiramdam ng breast ko, you're more, you're more secure, you're more comfortable with that. You know? And observe the breast cancer screening guidelines. So, I'll talk to you about screening, no? So, how can we make sure ba that we can have early detection, if ever, if ever lang naman, no? Tandaan nyo lang, at age 20, at age 30, at age 40. This is for the normal risk group, ha? Ibig sabihin, yung hindi increased yung risk mo. Yung, yung, yung normal na, basta lahat ng babae, increased risk ka kung heavy family history, kung nagkaroon na ka na ng breast cancer, no? By the age of 20, dapat, we are already adept. Ibig sabihin, we're already familiar of how to conduct the self-breast exam. That is our responsibility to ourselves and to our bodies. Alright? So, monthly self-breast exam is performed more or less 7 to 10 days after the first day of menstruation every month. Okay? So, that's beginning age of 20. Beginning the age of 30, all of us should be, it is recommended that we go for an annual clinical exam with your doctor. Meaning, kakapain ka nila, interviewin ka nila, may make sure nila na wala kang signs and symptoms of the of breast cancer. So, at age 20, self-breast exam. At age 30, it's self-breast exam and annual clinical exam. At age 40, tatlo na po yan. It's monthly self-breast exam, it's annual clinical exam, and annual mammogram with ultrasound. Okay? So, annual mammogram and ultrasound po yan, ha? It's not annual mammogram or ultrasound. It has to be both. And 
it has to be digital mammogram. I understand um, other provinces would still have the old mammogram, which is the analog, no? But if you have the option, if you have if you are you have the liberty to choose better to have the digital mammogram kasi in terms of kunwari um in layman's parang kunwari lang yan pag sa picture yung yung the old mammogram parang film pa yon film pa yung picture na yon pero yung picture na bago ngayon ang gamit na di ba digital camera no so mas mas clear mas nakikita namin yung delineation so, ano ibig sabihin ng screening? Screening, ibig sabihin, lahat. Whether may nararamdaman kayo or hindi, basta babae kayo, basta babae tayo, kailangan ginagawa natin to. Beginning at the age of 20. Na po. So, it's for you, it's for me, it's for all of us. Okay? So, turo ko lang ho, um, brief uh, discussion on how to go about your self-breast exam. No? So, syempre, before you take the shower, before you take your shower, when you're, you know, when you've taken out your clothes already, just face the mirror. Tignan niyo lang yung shape ng breasts niyo. Because you should know what, you know, what your breasts look like. So, check niyo lang. Harap kayo sa salamin, tapos side view, check niyo lang. Meron bang bago, meron bang indentation. Watch out for the things that I have said kanina. Meron bang dimple, meron bang skin changes, meron bang po de orange, yung orange orange peel like skin. So check nyo yun. So and then pwede nyo rin itaas yung arms nyo. Check nyo kung kung dapat tataas yung breast yun eh. Sometimes kasi minsan yung breast sobra ng tigas nakadikit sa sa chest ng babae. Kahit iakyat niya, hindi rin gagalaw yung hindi gagalaw yung breast. Or maybe when you bend forward, supposedly dapat by gravity mag, medyo mag uh, ano din babagsak din yung breast nyo. No? Sometimes, ma, yung ibang babae, dikit na yung breast nila sa chest nila. Hindi na siya, ano, hindi na siya babagsak pag nag-bend forward. And then also, syempre, check for nipple discharge. So, gently lang. For example, ito yung nipple. Gently lang. I-milk nyo lang kaunti yung breast. Tapos, tingnan nyo lang kung may lalabas. No? So, huwag yung ganyan-ganyan na yan. Kasi definitely, sometimes yan, may makikita kayo, may white na lalabas, no? or parang milky. But these are physiologic, meaning usual na, na discharge na hindi namang nakakatako. So, in front of the mirror pa lang ho yan, no? So, once naliligo na talaga kayo, check each breast na. So, for example, if you're checking the right breast, tas nyo lang yung hand nyo na yung right side din sa likod lang ng leeg nyo. And then with soap, better kung may soap or conditioner sa kamay, just go over the entire breast and kapainin nyo, tingnan nyo kung anong, kung merong bang bukol or wala. Okay? Siyempre, kailangan umabot kayo dito. This, we call this the supraclavicular area. Ibig sabihin, di ba meron tayong bones po dito, itong area dito. Kasi minsan, dyan yung kulahan eh. Or sa may kilikili. Okay? And then you just do the same on the other side. Okay? Pwede rin po yan gawin habang nakahiga, maglagay lang ho ng pillow under the, sa likod natin para medyo naka-layad po tayo, naka, naka-angat po yung breast. No? So, if you want to look at the left, angat nyo lang yung left nyo na kamay and then repeat on the right side. Okay? Now, so ano pa ba? Diba sabi ko nga, hindi natin mapiprevent talaga eh. But we can decrease our chance. No? A lot of patients, very anxious talaga. They're waiting for me to tell us, to tell them, parang ano ba talagang gagawin ko? Is there something concrete that I can do para hindi ako magkaroon ng cancer? No? The sad thing is kasi wala. It's not like, wala siyang, hindi siya parang COVID na may bakuna. No? So, decrease our risk lang. Ano yon? So, keep ourselves healthy. Stay away from smoking. Stay away from alcohol. You know? Exercise. Healthy diet. So, lots of fish. You know? it's, it's actually more of a balanced diet. Walang bawal. Patients ask me kung may bawal ba or ano, a particular food group that they should avoid um, 
meat is okay, but there's a certain amount na pwede lang yan per week. No? Meat is okay, sugar is okay, carbs is okay. Diba sabi nga nila, may triangle yan, may nutrition triangle yan. We need carbs, we need fats, we need protein. So, kailangan balanced diet. And then, be more, be, um, lambingin nyo minsan yung sarili nyo. Go for a vacation, stress-free dapat, paminsan-minsan. You know, we can never take out stress from our lives because, you know, we'll always have challenges as long as we're alive. But it's a matter of stress management. Okay? So, have a good time with friends and family. Yan, makakatulong. So with that, thank you. And if you have concerns, if you would like to see consult with the breast surgeon, the breast center, the medical city, Clark is open Mondays to Fridays at 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And just look for nurse ladies. Thank you, sir. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Meron pa ho tayong open forum, so I hope I'll be able to clarify more. I'm, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Claudine Ordonez, breast surgeon, head of Medical City Clark Breast Center, for the valuable learnings and insights that we had. And to our webinar attendees, hold your questions. We will have the Q&A forum after our second talk. So today's Southwell webinar, take charge of your health, what you need to know about your body and cancer prevention. So our second speaker, fellow of the Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society, graduate, doctor of medicine from AUF School of Medicine, finished residency training in obstetrics and gynecology from AUFMC in Angeles City, assistant training officer at the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at AUFMC, advocate of women's wellness and in making pregnancy a pleasant experience. Kundalini Yoga Practitioner, Certified Level 1 Yoga Teacher, and the Chair of Department of Ob Obstetrics and Gynecology in the Medical City Clark. Let's all welcome on Zoom virtual podium, Dr. Gina Masangkai. Good afternoon, Dr. Gina. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, Nice lecture, Dr. Ordonez. So, Medra, um, our topic today is prevention of cancer and to take care of your health. So, for the prevention of cancer in obstetrics and gynecology, some of our cancers are either hereditability or in your genes, or it's uh, they don't really have any signs or symptoms until it's developed. So, for me today, I'm just going to try to empower the women out there in our webinar today uh, for prevention and taking care of yourself. So, women in general are the frontliners of our homes and uh, our family and taking care of a lot of people. So, as Doctora said, today is uh, no, this month is March. Uh, the month of March is National Women's Month, and basically, uh, it's a celebration of women. No? So today, I'd like to take this time to celebrate an integral part of our society, which is the women who are uh, the frontliners of our family, and uh, they're fo so focus-driven um, on uh, helping others and loved ones. And so a little big brief background, no? Uh, so, uh, no. so I'll just share my screen. I'll just a little bit brief background. Sorry. So for women's health, no, um, just a little beef background. Uh, so women's health actually roots from the 1900s. It roots all the way, or women's uh, no, issues, no, uh, in the 1900s, early in America. And what it was, was they were trying to fight for like women's rights and women's uh, empowerment and health and, and, and the legislation, no. So what happened is that here in the Philippines, women's suffrage started in 1988 when we first got the vote uh, that women had the right to vote, no, and hold politics, uh, no, uh, hold positions in politics. However, in women's health, health issues, um, what comes to mind and that a lot of uh, no, societies like mine and the um, Philippine Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology, we have this what they call the UN Congress or, or Health Congress and it's the 1995 that's very significant which is the fourth UN World Congress which actually was held in China, Beijing. So what happened was that that was a uh, that was a turning moment in which 
a declaration and a pledge was signed um, that actually addressed uh, 12 key areas to ensure quality and opportunities for women and, and girls and some men and boys. But this was uh, held to achieve a greater uh, possibility or give women a greater equality or opportunity in society. So these are the 12 features now. I'm going over them only because to make you understand that us women, um, are actually you know, empowered to do something so that we can know about ourselves. So uh, we actually fought for our uh, no, rights, no? so women's rights. So we, they, they, they covered on women poverty, um, education and training for women, women's health, violence against women, uh, women and armed conflict, women in economy, women in power or decisions in making um, places like I know, holding office or being a leader, uh, human rights, for women, women in the media, the, the representation of women, equal gender um, distribution or portrayal of women on the media, and women in the environmental issues, and the child, the girl child, which is the beginning of in the adolescence age of women, uh, in which we're most vulnerable for a lot of like uh, abuse in the know. Uh, so that was tackled. And then Actually, what the, the UN wanted to do was they wanted to establish I know, criteria, programs, and legislation to help women achieve like a better health, and in particular, maternal health, because more than 300,000 women die each year uh, in childbirth complications. And then after 20 years, a doctor from the World Health Organization, Dr. Flavia Bustero, um, he came out with the 10 top issues of the women after like 20 years later of that declaration. So yes, there's still existence of the cancer, the reproductive health issues of unsafe con and no contraception use. So the STIs, no, uh, maternal health and mortality, HIV, the spread of HIV, sexually transmitted infections like syphilis, and gonorrhea and chlamydia, and then violence against women, mental health, and non communicable diseases like, you know, car accidents, no, uh, roadside accidents, too much alcohol, too much uh, tobacco, no. And then just being young, there's a lot of like complications or a lot of issues as in uh, growth and, uh, you know, development of younger, and also with getting older, which is mostly abuse, no. So here in 20, 16, there was a published in uh, the inquirer about the eight health concerns of Filipino women. And number one was cardiovascular. And then the next was stroke and cancer, usually breast cancer and lung cancer, diabetes, urinary tract infections, migraines, depressions, and maternal health. Maternal health is still a millennial goal for the, uh, the global goal, no? for us to reduce the death of maternal you know, uh, women giving health, um, birth. So what are the top diseases that kill women in the Philippines that's reported or published in 2018, uh, neoplasms or cancers. And basically these were noted to be breast cancer and cervical cancer. Um, ischemic heart disease, women and men both suffer for ischemic heart disease, but they found out that it's higher in, in women than it is in men. And pneumonia, no, that's a communicable disease. No, so breast cancer, 16% of all cancer diagnosed and about 30% of women um, cases, no, and then three out of 100 Filipinos, oops, sorry, three out of 100 Filipinos will develop cancer in their lifetime. Ischemic heart disease is a silent disease due to the buildup of plaque in your arteries. And then pneumonia, again, is a respiratory tract infection that affects your lungs, and it's highly very contagious. And now for our concerns of women's health is the women's reproductive health um, problems that are responsible for the one third of health issues of women from the ages of 15 to 44, uh, mainly unsafe sex. No, uh, maternal health: 300 million women are still dying from compli complications of pregnancy and childbirth, and all over the world. And it, it was reported that there was like 1,483 1, maternal deaths in 2018. Okay. So what is women's health? Women's health is a branch of medicine that focuses on just the conditions affecting the physical and emotional being of women. This one, they give you an a range of um, like uh, stages in every age and every stage. There's uh, services like birth controls and STIs. Excuse me, there's something blocking my screen. Um, STIs. 
um, and mammography, cancers of the breast, cervical, uh, ovarian, pathological uh, uh, cases in the in the pelvis. However, some of the cancers in the pelvic organs can go undetected unless it's hereditary. Like if with the with the uh, breast cancer, you could uh, know if you're you're positive to the BRCA1 a genes, uh, and two, you could actually be linked to the ovarian cancer, which was, goes hand in hand with the breast cancer. For cervical cancer, it's not hereditary. It's more commonly I know, uh, um, attained by a viral infection or the HPV um, infection. And then there's also the benign conditions of the maternal or female body like myomas, abnormally during bleedings, or PCOS, which is the most common benign condition that a lot of women experience you know, at certain ages. And then menopause for elderly is in hormone therapy and also the, the, the address, addressing the problem of osteoporosis. And then also the women and heart disease, sexual health, and most importantly, pregnancy and childbirth. So when we talk about you know, uh, women's health, we, we want to emphasize the preventive scare, care and screening. Uh, yung preventive care kasi, um, like I said before, most of the gynecologic cases of women, you don't necessarily you know, see them uh, or uh, automatically you can uh, see them or there's signs and symptoms. Usually when there's signs and symptoms, it means it's either kalat na siya or it's there already. So maybe prevention is the cure. Like Doctora said, nothing is 100%. Even if you are the, the careful of careful, if it's in your genes or if you're meant to have it, then you will have it. But we can delay and you could actually get detected earlier so you can be it can be manageable. No? So you should have your regular gynecologic checkup, including your pelvic exam and your, in your breast examinations. And usually, like Doctora mentioned, it usually starts at the age of 20, on the way, all the way up to 65. Your pap smear and HPV testing, usually um, that is for detection of cervical cancer because before it becomes unmanageable. And it usually begins at the age of 21 years of age. And then usually it, it, you do it every three years up to the age of 65, as long as there's no other problems. But if there's, you know, abnormalities, then uh, the, your doctor should advise you um, to the appropriate management or approach to your condition. The bone density testing, this is specifically for our menopausal women or those women who are at risk for osteoporosis porosis or poor brittle or poor or weak or brittle bone disease no this is to prevent them from becoming brittle and usually the screening starts about uh, the age of 65 years old however i uh, know they can start as early as 50 if the women have are already menopausal no so as doctora went over the breast cancer screening and breast self examinations and um, instructions on starting as early as age 20 and then your annual mammogram starts at age 40 and then even even earlier if you have history of breast cancer in the family. Now about the cancer colon screening. Cancer colon screening usually starts at the age of 50. Some start at the age of 45, all the way to 75 years of age. And what do they do? Usually it's colposcopy or colonoscopy, no? And then uh, there's age appropriate immunizations. You know, the immunizations like, you know, from childhood to now, uh, that's something that, you know, that, that your doctor can tell you about. And then for, for women, screenings for STIs, which can actually, you know, prevent you from having like a good fertile period or having a uh, prevention for your reproductive, uh, no, um, your reproductive uh, no, capability. So most importantly, the healthy lifestyle risk. I hope I have time. This is actually something that is very important in prevention. And I think nutrition um, is first. And this is a is this is an article that actually focuses on adolescents, maternal nutrition and health starting in preconception years. They're saying that women actually are the incubators for the future. No, so uh, we have to be healthy enough to actually um, birth the future. No, so these are just recommendations for optimizing nutrition throughout the life cycles and how important the balance diet is no preconceptionally up to postconception breastfeeding and and what you teach your children so as early as adolescence that's when you have to teach uh women or children uh young girls you know to be properly having the proper diet uh and and, and education to actually lead a healthy lifestyle no they emphasize the importance of nutritional status in adolescence that actually impacts the future of pregnancy no
So these are just examples on like uh, what's recommended preconception weight, what kind of weight uh, you should be at. You should be at your ideal body weight. The composition of a healthy diet usually includes the fruits, the nuts, uh, how much portions you should eat, how much sugar you should have in your diet. And women should take that in consideration because preconceptionally makes an optimal and best pregnancy. Okay. And then here are just, you know, some of the pitfalls of, you know, having to have some kind of macronutrient deficiencies that, that kind of make pregnancy or a woman who is going to uh, be pregnant have a harder time or can suffer for different diseases like uh, low in iron, iodine, folate, vitamin B12, calcium, even though we're, and vitamin D, even though we're exposed to the sun often, right now we're supposed to stay indoors and a lot of us wear sunscreen. So not a lot of vitamin D from sun exposure. So usually sometimes we recommend that, you know, you could have like uh, fortified supplements or fortified foods. So another thing about the nutritional status of uh, impact on pregnant women. If a woman is not nutritionally stable, the impact of pregnancy on, on uh, the impact of being pregnant on her body has a greater impact, no? So she'll have all these nutrient deficiencies and then she's more prone to like uh, bone diseases, uh, blood diseases, no, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, no, uh, complications during pregnancy. So we recommend that women who are getting pregnant seek preconception uh, no care, and then those who are pregnant seek antenatal care as soon as possible so that we can create correct the nutritional imbalances so that the baby inside we could actually, you know, bring it to the optimum best, you know, supply it with the right nutrients, with the, with the right, you know, food for the better development of the optimal, you know, uh, best baby you can have, you know, give it the most potential they can have. So, it doesn't end there when you're pregnant, no? After you give birth, no? Usually the mother suffers a lot from, from the changes of the hormones in her body during pregnancy, no? Um, so what it does is after birth, the nutritional status of women should be re-examined and if, if, if ever um, the mother and child should be counseled on how, you know, they could have the optimum nutrition, no? Um, also the WHO, the World Health Organization, um, recommends exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of an infant's life because breast milk is best for baby only because it's full of the nutrients and the immunity that you could pass on to your child. And Shampra, the healthier you are, the better your breast milk is. So here, this is something uh, different that uh, no, we're, we're, we're focusing on as a society on reproductive and development and environmental health. No? And this was actually launched in which how our environment affects the women's health. So if we're gonna talk about prevention of diseases and cancer in general, the things we use, the makeup we wear, the food we eat, um, how, how it's preserved in a can or not, the, the utensils that we use, no? If it's reusable or not, what is it made out of, no? The chemicals put into the products that we use, whether it be the detergent, the paint on our walls, um, those are the environmental effects of our body, in, within our body. So environmental effects, yeah. So that's something we're gonna focus on and that's like a totally whole different, uh, talk, no? So that's something interesting. So eight ways to stay healthy and prevent. Um, this is just my take home message. Uh, get your health checkup screenings because early detection is the best, no? So especially for cervical cancer and all, no? Breast and, and the sun exposure. Uh, maintain a healthy weight, take off an extra few pounds to have boost your health by eating more vegetables, smaller portions and eating more slowly and drinking more water. Exercise regularly, at least 30 minutes a day of some kind of walking, running, yoga, dancing, gardening, something that you can enjoy. Um, and also eat a healthy diet. Once again, try to, you know, cut back on your fast foods or your oily foods um, and also watch what you put into your body like the tobacco that you know you smoke the alcohol you can drink in moderation no uh, one one glass of alcohol for a woman per day and then for men it's okay to have two glasses no I don't think the glass should be like you know the super venti beer glasses maybe one or two servings 
a day, no? So also prioritize sleep. Sleep is very important. Sleep seven to eight hours a day. This is the time when your body actually has time to repair itself. And also maintain close relationships for a support system, no? For, for our mental health. And then someone you could run to. And then reduce stress. Take the time for self-care. Learn to say no and learn to put yourself first. And so that is just... Uh, ways to stay healthy and prevent cancer. And then I'd like to end with a quote from uh, an American writer, caring for your body and mind and spirit is the greatest and grandest responsibility. It is about listening to your needs and of your soul and then honoring them. So that's something that for me, you know, that the only people or the only person who knows what you really, really want is yourself. And then for us to give ourselves to others, then we should be able to have you know, a healthy lifestyle so that we can give to others. So before you can save others, you have to save yourself. So be responsible, be empowered, and choose to be healthy and happy. Thank you for your time. Well said and presented in a capsule. Thank you, Dr. Gina Masangkai, OB gynecologist and the chair of the Medical City Clark Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. One hour is not enough for our two topics. We cannot have everything that we need to know in just one sitting. So email us or call us in house bell for group trainings and workshops uh, like this topic. Before we proceed to the question and answer forum, may we remind the hospital webinar attendees to kindly accomplish the activity feedback form posted now on the chat box. Hello to Karen Agustin Austria. And also to our male attendees, thank you. It may not be directly for you, but this webinar is also for our loved ones, to our mothers, sisters, wife, or women friends. Okay, the first question. What is your take on the use of sanitary napkin that are all natural with negative ions? Atomy brand contributed to the improvement of my cycle. So, okay, this question goes to... <laughs> yes, Dr. Gina. Um, of course, all natural and no chemicals is, I know, is best for us. And I think also the improvement of cycle, it could be because most of our sanitary napkins are like uh, padded with like plastics, anti-absorbents. And so that means that it's unnatural. And I think it has something to do with like the flow to come out. So sometimes women say if they use a certain napkin, it doesn't come out. If they use another napkin, they come out. The more natural, I think, uh, usually I think it comes with the fibers rather than, you know, if it comes out or not. And sometimes, naman, uh, the less chemicals, the better it is. Okay. Is it advisable to have these BRCA1 and BRCA2 genetic mutation tested for a woman with family history of breast cancers? If so, where or which laboratory do these have to be tested? Dr. Claudine? Dr. Claudine, you're muted. Microphone, please. Sorry. Okay. There are actually indications wherein patients become there, there are indications wherein patients become candidates for genetic testing, no? Um, we have to find out. It's important for us to find out what age this uh, relative had her breast cancer or whatever cancer, no? There are a lot of, uh, no, just see your doctor. And these tests are actually not available locally. So we send them to labs which and in return, the lab send them overseas. Usually it takes around, earliest I think is three weeks. And the cheapest I came across uh, would be around 19,000 eh, last year. So available naman ah, available. Just ask your doctor and so that you know whether you are, you are at, at risk and whether you're a candidate for genetic testing. Thank you, Dr. Claudine. And then what are the factors to be considered if a person would like to know his or her potential of developing cancer in the future? Any cancer? Yes, any cancer. Yeah. Well, yun nga eh. uh, there are no studies or no, no laboratory analysis that we can that can compute or calculate the 
the the our exact chance of of contracting cancer in the future we know lang that we are at an increased risk increased risk no or not so yun nga whether we are at an increased risk or not there are recommendations on when we can start our screening so i have gone over that for breast dr regina has gone over that for for gynecologic malignancies and she also mentioned colorectal because colorectal cancer is the fifth naman the most common cancer worldwide so these are things that you should pay attention to okay so i think uh, we should have a good lifestyle so as to prevent <laughs> isn't it so next question what Wait, is the difference add, um, oh, yes of course dr gina you may add uh, yeah, I, I agree with Dr. Ordonez, but then in other countries, like more advanced countries, they have the genetic genome study. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. if you have the money or if you want to spend, then yes. But just the fact that maybe it runs in your family, then you are at risk. So yes, prevention or delaying of the on button of the cancer is something that, yes, tama, you just have to have a good lifestyle. No, take care of yourself. But uh, the on button might be delayed on turning on. <laughs> so you yes, Okay, what's the difference between breast, UTZ, and mammogram? Which is better? As I said kanina, sir, no, breast ultrasound is different from, uh, for, from a mammogram and both should be done for patients 40 and above. But for patients below 40, we should just ask for an ultrasound. So we can't say which one is better because they look at different things. The breast ultrasound will help us find out whether the mass is um, harder, whether the mass is cystic or solid. And then the mammogram usually tells us, aside from the obvious signs of cancer, it tells us also of early changes of breast cancer. So sometimes in the pasakita on ultrasound, we can already see changes on mammogram. So we always ask for both. For both. Okay, there's a follow-up question. Is mammogram painful? So I'm kind of afraid of the thought. <laughs> Not really. Actually, marami namang ano, marami namang nagsasabi, um, they're really scared of the mammogram. But it's actually parang ano lang eh, parang iniipit lang. Um, paano ba? Try nyo lang ipitin yung ganito nyo for maybe 15 seconds. And for each breast, um, there are two views kasi, no? Two views. So, sinisqueeze yun twice. So, around 25 seconds per breast. So, for the, for the, parang x-ray kasi yun eh, di ba? When, when you're undergoing x-ray, they tell you, hingang malalim, pigil, di ba? So, roughly parang six seconds yun. Ganun na pag mammogram naman, um, nagpa-process yung machine mga 12 seconds. Hindi naman siya masakit, but I advise my patients for those na low tolerance talaga for pain, I give them pain medication prior to the prior to the this to the mammogram. Okay. Uh, Dr. Gina, is it safe to go to the medical city clerk if I am pregnant? Yes, um the medical city clerk is a safe Space, no. Uh, we have the screening. We have uh, we have the contingency protocol or plans in which all the people who walk in are screened, no. Uh, and also we we emphasize that you have your uh, minimal your protocol, the mask, the face shield, no, and social distancing. Do you have the four D ultrasound? How can I book an appointment? Yes, there's a 4D ultrasound for uh, pregnant women are uh, is available and usually you could go on the website and then there's a, a, a section in which you could actually uh, know, uh, book an appointment or a call for radiology. Yes, there are so interesting questions here, additional questions. What's the cause of hormonal imbalance? What are the treat treatments for it? Usually hormonal imbalance is just a... a what we call or in layman's term, parang nabalutin ng taba yung ovary, so it's not functioning properly, so that the hormones are not balanced enough to make you uh, stimulate your 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 matres or your uterus to actually have a menstrual cycle. So most of the time, women don't have menstrual cycle, and some of the time, women have a, a 
uh, a hard time getting pregnant and how you can treat it first and foremost, diet. Uh, I think most of the women uh, with a high fat diet uh, suffer from uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome or hormonal imbalance. And so diet and exercise and just the proper balanced meals are good. No, so active lifestyle. Yes, follow up question. Also. Is 36 the menstrual cycle normal? Well, the normal menstrual cycle usually is 21 to 35 days. So yeah, give or take, maybe your last day is just a patak lang, then it's normal, no? Uh, usually it's 21 to 35 days and it usually lasts for seven days. So that's a normal cycle. Yes, Dr. Claudine, I don't really have any family history of cancer. What factors can possibly contribute to developing cancer in the future? Like what, what types of food, etc. Hi, ma'am. Um, like I said, kanina, no, increased risk. So as we advance in our ages, so syempre, we're at increased risk. Whether you were smoking when you were younger or still smoking, whether you have high exposure to alcohol, these things. Also, the lifestyle. We, we really advocate a healthy lifestyle for our patients. And it's important to know it's not only for prevention of getting cancer, but for my patients who are already diagnosed with cancer, we ask them to still observe a healthy lifestyle to decrease the chances of recurrence. So kasama dyan yung exercise, no? I'm a particular fan of yoga or sometimes for the older patients, I tell them to just try qigong kasi mas, mas, ano yun eh, mas friendly sa joints or maybe tai chi, no? And also balanced diet. As Dr. Gina has mentioned kanina, as much as possible, stay away from processed foods. So anything in canned and then fast foods. Once in a while, I know that it's good to have a burger or pizza, no? but if this is our everyday diet, uh, medyo, ano tayo? that's a bit dangerous. Shout out to Sol Simon. So I heard of the word yoga. So let's do yoga again. So again, thank you, Dr. Gina Masangkai, OB gynecologist. And uh, thank you, Dr. Claudine Ordonez, breast surgeon. Let's have a souvenir screenshot photo, Ms. Megan. Let's go. One, two, three. Sa pa po. One, two, three. Okay na po. Housewell would like to virtually award the Certificate of Appreciation to our source speakers for today. Certificate of Appreciation is given to Dr. Claudine Ordonez, breast surgeon, head the Medical City Clark Breast Center, for sharing her expertise in today's webinar entitled, Take Charge of Your Health, What You Need to Know About Your Body and Cancer Prevention, signed by yours truly, Avel H. Antonio, Director Housewell. Dr. Claudine, would you like to have any parting words? Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's really, really, we, I particularly appreciate invites like this because it helps me empower the women out there. Because as I've said, nga, no, that we cannot prevent breast cancer. And breast cancer is really the, if not the top one, the top two. Dati kasi top one, ngayon top two ulit. But I think the 2020 data showed that it's top one again. So it's very, very common. So, yun. So that's part of my advocacy to make patients and women more aware. So thank you for the opportunity. Yes, thank you. Certificate of Appreciation is given to Dr. Gina Masangkai, OB gynecologist, chair the Medical City Clark Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology for sharing her expertise in today's webinar entitled Take Charge of Your Health, What You Need to Know About Your Body and Cancer Prevention, signed by yours truly, Avela H. Antonio, Director, Housepill. Dr. Gina Masangkai, thank you again. Thank you. Um, for me, uh, it's an advocate for me to uh, know women's health and also the the pregnancy as a pleasurable experience, you no know, journey to motherhood. Uh, for me, just for women out there, be empowered to take power, you no know, to to have control over yourself. And you know, in order for you to take care of others, you have to take care of yourself. So don't wait until the symptoms get worse. So uh, to, to prevent any diseases or at least you know have an inkling of an idea so that you could you know be prepared is just to have your checkups and don't be afraid 
like cultural wise or or what you may find no to be to be ready because nobody is really 100 ready it's just being you know well informed and educated so thank you for the invite and thank you for letting me have the opportunity to share yes and to the medical city clark certificate of appreciation is given to the medical city clark for partnership with Housepill on the webinar entitled Take Charge of Your Health, What You Need to Know About Your Body and Cancer Prevention, signed by yours truly, Abel H. Antonio, Director Housepill. Virtually receiving the certificate for the Medical City Clerk is Ms. Eunice Joshua Patriarca, the Medical City Clerk Corporate Relations Specialist. Good afternoon, Ms. Yunis. Hi, Sir Abel. Good afternoon. So on behalf of Ms. Evelyn and Mr. Kevin Alfonso and the whole TMC family, I would like to extend my appreciation to Holy Angel University, of course, particularly to Mr. Abel Antonio, the director of House Spell, our dear doctors, Dr. Claudine Ordonez and Dr. Gina Masankai, and of course, to our audience in attending and taking an active role in caring for their health. So allow me to remind everyone that TMC Clark continues to be a safe zone for everyone, COVID patients or non-COVID cases with our two systems and one hospital scheme. Therefore, you need not to worry for we are well prepared and we stay ready ever since this pandemic started. Do not delay your health, breast care and OB care. The Medical City Clark is always here to serve you the best quality care amidst this difficult time. This has been Eunice, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Eunice. And as they say, prevention is power. So thank you. Thank you to our household webinar attendees and participants on behalf of the University President of HAU, Dr. Luis Marie Arcalingo. Thank you, Dr. Gina Masangkai. And thank you, Dr. Claudine Ordonez, our source speakers. Thank you to the following for making this household webinar a success. To the Medical City Clark, Ms. Evelyn Yumul, Mr. Kevin Alfonso, and to the webinar team, Megan Canlapan, Leonard Sika, Kinky Talentino, and from HRMO, Mark Louis Lansangan and Herma Trisha Maliari. Thank you for joining House Spell today. Stay so awesome. See you all next week. Laos Deo Semper. Bye.